Welcome. In this video, we'll talk about some of the market dynamics. That is pretty much summarized in three various three areas that we'll talk about. We we'll talk about the market size, the growth rate of the market, and then the evolution of that market or the stage in markets, which we'll actually talk about in the next video. This, for this video, we'll talk about these first two items and then set up a little bit the idea of the evolution of the market for the next discussion, the next video. But all of these are the dynamics of the market. Let's talk about the size of the market first. The important thing to know about the size of your market, if you have a lot of people that are likely to purchase your product from you, then you have more of an opportunity to recover your costs quickly. If you only have a few people that will buy your product, then every single one you make, you have to recover all the costs of getting the equipment, the people, all the design and marketing recovered in one product. But if you can make multiple products and there's lots of people to buy that product, then you have that opportunity to recover those costs more quickly, which can lower your costs, can lower the price point for the consumers and even grow your market further. So what you want to be looking at when you think about the size of the market is you're actually thinking about how, how, how to identify how many people there actually are in the specific segments you're targeting. Now, remember, if you're a startup, you're generally relatively small, localized, there's limits to what you can do. So you might think about the geography that you're in, you might be in the Long Island area. The people that you can reach, really, are only in the Long Island area. Now, you might say, well, we have the internet, I'm going to put up a website, but you still have to reach people Whoever go to your website, you have to get the product to them. You have to convince them to purchase it. Um, and it becomes a different story with the Internet because it's changed the rules a little bit over the last uh, 10, or, 10 or 15 years. But by and large, you still have this limitation of being small and not that many people know about you. You're under the radar, which works to your favor, but also means people don't know, necessarily know you're there. So you have to find the customers that you're looking for and find out how many of them there are that you can reach. You look at your segments, your demographics, perhaps your geographic region. Maybe there's doing a certain sport. If you're selling a particular piece of sporting equipment, which are those people? What is that size? You want that size to be as large as possible to recover them. But remember, you want to be specific because when people hear about your product, you want them to seal, feel that you're solving a problem that they have and different people have different problems all right so that is the market size issue a very important element of the dynamics that you're looking for and it helps you to quantify all this market need and other analysis you're doing so that you could turn this whole idea of a market into an opportunity and then into revenue and size all right the second thing to look at is how fast the market is growing what the opportunity is here because what that tells you is if you have a relatively large market that's growing quickly you don't have to take market share from anyone you just have to win over new customers that are coming on board every year which you have more of an equal playing field you don't have to take them from somebody else it makes it easier to bring on new customers the volume is continuing in fact you can start with a relatively small market if it's growing fast enough and over a number of years with compound interest rates, you'll find that you'll, if you're growing at 20% a year, five or seven years, it's the, 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 it doubles in size or, or even more quickly. And you could have a, quite a large market in no time. And you could own that market if you're very good at winning over those new customers. So growth dynamics works in the favor of startups because you don't have to take customers from anyone else. You're taking ones that are new entering the market, either because they're moving into the area, or they're entering a certain demographic age group, or they're joining the community that you're involved with, that you're targeting, like a particular sport, that sort of thing. And if that's a growing area, then all those new people are potential customers. And that really works for you. It helps you work on economies of scale and the like. That really works to your favor. In the next session, though, we'll take this dynamic further and say, you have a large market or even a smaller market that's growing very quickly, do the dynamics, if it's a new market or an aging market, does that make it an effect? And we'll talk about the market adoption curve called the S-curve in our next discussion, our next video.